Fear is the number one cause of people not being successful because the average person freezes themselves with fear and they never try. You know, Paralysis by analysis, like, man. People are afraid to fail. Dog, that's the process. That's part Don't of it. Don't who you talk to. How many, how many agree that failure is just success turned inside out? The inside success, inside of it, in the core of it, is a lot of failures. And most times people will fail. Why? Because they don't keep pressing forward. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, my team has been talking to me a lot about the earn your leisure guys, EYL. And uh, just doing a little bit of research on these guys. Apparently, um, there's two guys that have a podcast. And I think one of them is a former financial advisor. But right now, leading the country and in most demographics, most most sectors of financial literacy. So very proud of these guys. Look forward to meeting them. But they're interviewing Steve Harvey at his estate. He's going over his five pillars of success. So let's take a look at this. Now, I understand you have five core principles when it comes to- By the way, I already business. like these hosts. They got the right tagline on their shirt. Assets over liabilities. Assets over liabilities. I love it. Most people have liabilities over assets. Uh, dreaming big, dream big. Use your imagination. It's like he's wearing a Rolex. Everything go. starts with the dream. Nothing launches without the dream. That, that comes from your childhood, from anything. It's the dream. It's the core basis of success. Dreaming big here. Oftentimes, most people stop dreaming, sadly, in junior high. Something happened between third, fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade where people just stop dreaming. People said, hey, man, what are you going to be? Your parents asked you, family said, hey, what are you going to be when you grow up? I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a president. I'm going to be a soldier. I'm going to be whatever. Everybody, when they were babies, was dreaming big. So the question for you is what turned off the dream machine? And I'm reading many of the comments on our YouTube channel. And oftentimes people say, hey, making $100,000. What are you talking about? It's no big deal. It's a huge deal. Making a million bucks. It's no big deal. It's a huge deal. Well, it's a huge deal if you stop dreaming. Because once you stop dreaming, your desire to increase your skills, your desire to have greater clarity about you, what you want in your life, seeking deeper purpose and fulfillment in your life's work, that all gets turned off. And then you just go into drone mode. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. said one time, he says, most people die at 25. They just get buried at 65. So my question for you guys watching this, have you turned on your dream machine again? See, the thing with me, man, is I don't really focus on the technical aspects of business because I'm not the technical guy. I focus on the mental aspect of business. I focus on the part that go on in here because if you fix what goes on in here, yep. you got a shot. 100%. Listen, majority of financial literacy, is, you might think it's how to invest or where to invest or where to put your money and tax advantages and all that stuff. That's secondary to mindset. That's secondary to attitude. That's secondary to your 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 heart knowledge versus head knowledge. Now, hey, you technical ain't nothing if you ain't got it set up. So the the dream is the core of everything. Yes, that dream, man, it drives it, you, it's, man. It's biblical. You know, man without a dream or a vision shall perish. Doesn't bother yeah. you. Education ain't even yeah. in the Bible. Let's actually go into the Bible first. It goes like this: Hosea four chapter six says, "My people are destroyed." for lack of knowledge. So if you're looking at your life, you're looking at your world, your family, your last name, the children that you're raising, if you as a mom, a dad, an uncle, an auntie, a godparent, grandma, grandpa, do you have vision for your family? Because if you don't have vision, then you don't have dreams. And if you don't have dreams, get you what you settle for. You settle for a nightmare. I never, I ain't never read nothing about Harvard, Emory, <laughs> I ain't never heard. No Ivy League scriptures. I've never. <laughs> all it talks about yes. is that dream. So that's the core. Albert Einstein had a quote. He said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. By the way, I just right now want to salute Steve Harvey because I remember growing up and watching this guy as a comedian. The Steve Harvey show, the Kings of Comedy. And then he transitioned into TV personality. He transitioned into more media versus just then being a stand up comic, which I believe what... That was his first love. And if you go back to any research about Steve Harvey, about how he got his job 
and how he had to hustle from the Northeast to get down to Florida to get his first job. He had zero money, he had zero dollars. And to see where he's at today, it's because of a dream and because imagination and ingenuity, it wasn't the how to, how to, it was the will to do something big. When the reasons are big, the dreams are big, the how to is easy. When I heard that, that tripped me out because here's Albert Einstein setting it out that imagination is everything, it's the preview to life coming attraction. So everything that's in your imagination is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction Come that on, he has baby. for you. Come on. That's right, man. Because if you've got a dream and you try to share it with other people, they're not going to understand this. They're not going to understand your dream. That's why God gave you that dream. And they didn't give it to anybody else. That's why God, that's why God gave you a dream. It's not for them to understand. It's for you to understand. They're not going to see your imagination. You can quit telling it to them. Because if God wanted them to see it, he'd have put it in their imagination. But he put it in yours. That's so right. imagination you is as critical as the dream because the imagination is just God showing you a preview of what he has for you. It's like when you go to a movie and you get your popcorn and you sit mm, down you before the, the movie start, what do they show you? Preview. They show you previews of what? A coming attraction. It's kind of like how I'm feeling right now about Top Gun 2. I've been looking forward to seeing that movie with Tom Cruise. Cannot wait for Top Gun 2 to come out. Are you guys excited about to see that movie? Woo! Maverick! Once you see the preview, it's finna be a movie. <laughs> you believe that. And that's how, that's how the imagination works in your life. Let me ask, the third one is very interesting to me. You show gratitude. What? See, inside that word gratitude is the word aptitude. If you're not grateful about the blessing that you have in your life, the simple opportunities, you know, I, I say this to most people in America, as hard as it is in America, one thing I've done in my life, and I know some of you are just checking out my channel for the very first time. I served in the Marine Corps for eight years. Our family comes from the Philippines. I'm a first generation born here in America. I, I recall all the stories that my parents talked about in terms of coming here knowing nobody, only had a hundred bucks in their pocket, which in the Philippines is a fortune, coming here with a hundred bucks in their pocket in the 19, late 1960s. My mother getting a job as a nurse for 600 bucks a month. As a nurse, 600 bucks a month is first paycheck. And so if you're in America, regardless of all the challenges we got going on, all the difficulties we have going on, I'd rather have challenges and problems here in America than in the Philippines. I'd rather have challenges here in America than in Somalia. I'd rather have challenges in America here than in the Middle East where I was all deployed. I'd rather have problems here in America. At least here, for the most part, you can do something about it. Gratitude is one of the most overlooked and key principles to your success. If your goal is to be a millionaire, come on, and you start out making 20,000 a year. Here we go. But this is a preview of all the people that watch this channel and talk about making a million dollars. Oh my gosh, it's a pie in the sky type of thing. I want to help you dream again, knowing that I used to be there too as well. I used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. I used to, as a matter of fact, I still got paycheck stubs here for 1995 for my part-time job at G Fuel Loop, I was ecstatic to make another $185 extra each month working part-time while I was in the base on the military. I was happy to work outside on the base at G Fuel Loop for an extra 185 bucks a month. So I know what it's like to think that a million dollars is, no, is a big deal. And now I think it's no big deal because I started educating myself on making sure that it's not a big deal because I drove outside the military base and people got these million dollar homes drive Mercedes and BMWs, I'm asking myself, how come I'm not making that type of money? How come that's not my situation? I demanded better out of my life because I started saying, you know what? Let me crank this thing on called the dream machine. And then God gets you to 50. Levels to the you're game. you're mad because you ain't a millionaire. But hold up, man. Do you not remember? Well, how was it? Just a minute ago, you wasn't, didn't have but 20. <laughs> so you got to show gratitude that's for right. the 50. That's right. Then somehow, by the grace of God, you get to 150. Uh-huh. It's people making 150 who used to be dead broke mad because they not a millionaire. That's right. Hold up, partner. Do you remember? I, I could just listen to Steve Harvey, man. He, this guy is just preaching it. Uh, there's levels to this game. And it, oftentimes when we're in this social media filled world and you find people, oh, NFT this or Bitcoin this or real estate this, blah, 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 and get rich quick overnight. And you're like asking yourself, how come I'm not getting rich overnight? Listen, I've done this for 23 years now. I've seen it, I've seen it many times. I've been around the block a few times, a dozen times.
I've seen a lot of people get rich quick, and I saw a lot of people get broke very quickly, just as fast as they got rich. Why? Back to the original one. Their head knowledge, their heart knowledge, their mindset wasn't ready yet to receive those blessings. Why? Because somewhere around there, they weren't grateful of what they were doing. Uh, money's just a magnifier, what's already inside. It's gonna expose character, it's gonna magnify what's already in there. You have a giving character, money's gonna help you be a bigger giver. If you're greedy and selfish, money's only gonna magnify you being more greedy, more selfish, and less grateful and more skeptical and pessimistic. Every day somebody come to your house, they ask you for a cup of sugar, and you give it to them, and they walk away and don't ever say thank you. How many times Annoying. <laughs> can this cat come to your house? By the way, quick, quick side note, quick side note. If I'm at a business meeting, I take somebody out to lunch. One of the things I do as I'm observing them, whether or not I want to do business with them, or not whether I want them on as a client or not, I look at them and how they treat the server. Are they rude to the server? Do they dismiss the server? You know why? Because I used to be a server. It always annoyed me how people were rude to servers. That they're just there to help serve them food and give them food and how annoying, how rude they were and how lack of, and how they expressed a lack of gratitude and, of your willingness to help them get food. And if they can't just handle the simple characteristics of just courtesies of serving food, I don't know, man, long-term, short-term, I might make money with you, but long-term, I may, I may not want to do business with you. House and get this sugar without saying thank you to you before you as a human being go, yo, 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 my man, you come here every day and I give you this cup of sugar. You ain't said thank you one time. Uh -huh. Don't come back here no more. Exactly. I'm reminded of the story in the New Testament. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19 is about Jesus healing 10 men with leprosy. There's basically diseases of the skin. And so he healed them. And 10 of them left. Healed. One came back. One came back. And Jesus is saying, wait a minute, weren't there 10 of you? And this, this healed guy's like, yeah. So where are these, where are these, by the way, I'm paraphrasing here. He goes, where's the other nine? Didn't I heal 10 of you? He says, listen, man, I don't know, but I just want to say thank you. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for what you've done in my life. And it's amazing what Jesus' word said, and they went like this. He said, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And I wonder how this guy approaches other things that don't go right in his life, how he's going to be after that. And I can only imagine what the other nine are going to be like when they walk away. Okay, I'm healed. Thank you so much. Cool. No problem. Don't give us, don't got to say thank you. No appreciation, no gratitude. I wonder what's going to happen in their life as it plays out for the long term. 100, because you didn't show gratitude. Maybe sometimes when the guy that kept coming by your house asking for the cup of sugar, if he would show gratitude, maybe you go, hey man, he go a five pound sack of sugar. That way you ain't got to come back tomorrow. But if you never show the gratitude, you never become the recipient of the grace. And the grace is to what you need on top of that, that helps you get to the next level. For example, simple courtesies. Um, how many of you go to somebody's house or apartment for the very first time and you're empty handed? You know, it's a Filipino custom that when you go to somebody's house for the very first time, you customarily give them a bag of rice because you want to bless that family. You want to bless that home, that there's much more blessings that's going to come that way to the house because you are giving that home a bag of rice. You go to a friend's house, you, you go to a barbecue, do you come empty handed? Or are you there just to take, 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 but not give, 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 give. See, it's just not the, it's not the uh, fact that you're going out, out of your way. It's the, the courtesy, the fact that you want to take a little bit of investment of your own finances, probably a life virtue for you to consider. And take you play. My wife asked me the other day, cause I just turned 60. I bet you your friends will be happy. 65, right? I was talking to my wife and I said, baby, I was just kind of, kind of got a little throwed off a little bit because even I'm human, you know, I got a little throwed off. I said, baby, I just turned 65 and I really was wanting a little bit more to be popped off by now. She said, wait a minute, hold up, Steve. <laughs> wait a minute, hold up. She said, wait a minute, let me ask you something. When you was 30, where did you see yourself at 65? I said, well, I ain't see this. She said, exactly. She said, so you can want all you want. But you need to go outside and just drive around and go get in some of your cars and, and see how you fly and just take a look around. And yep. now I think you'll be all right. And I went on and sat down. <laughs> yeah, go sit down. What about overcoming fear? Well, by the way, my, my last thought there on, on, on gratitude. You know, if, if the opposite of gratitude is entitlement and jealousy and envy, 
And when somebody opens a door for you and a foot is in a door that should not have been opened, but you're in it, and you don't recognize a blessing that's there, you don't take advantage of it, that's why people miss out on opportunities. You know, I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen come through our doors here over the last 23 years, specifically the last six, seven. So I see a lot of people walk through our doors, broke, busted, disgusted, lacking financial literacy, lacking any financial support, lacking financial acumen. And then when a, once a curriculum comes their way, once somebody extends a hand out to say, hey, here, here you go, here's how you get out of the pit that you dug yourself in that sadly a generational curse has put you in and you don't realize that you're in it, here's a way out. Because the same shovel that got you in this pit is not gonna be the same shovel that gets you out. But yet, people don't look at their grave. Oh, I want you to do the work though. So what? You do the work. You should be grateful and thankful that somebody just opened a door for you. That somebody introduced you to a new connection. That somebody sent you a message. The small things that you should be grateful for. And not dismiss it. It's like, ah, it's going to come anyway. It's going to come anyway. That's one of the biggest things that causes people. No, notice it's not the investments. Notice it's not the insurance. Notice it's not the real estate. It's the aptitude. The attitude is what causes people to stumble in a major way because they're not grateful for the small things. Fear, fear is the number one cause of people not being successful because the average person freezes themselves with fear and they never try. You paralysis know? by analysis, like, man. People are afraid to fail. Dog, that's the process. That's part of it. I don't care who you talk to. How many, how many agree that failure is just success turned inside out? That inside success, inside of it, in the core of it, is a lot of failures. And most times people will fail. Why? Because they don't keep pressing forward. And when they don't keep pressing forward, they never allow success to show itself. You know, I uh, grew up in Chicago next to two horse tracks. And uh, one of my sins in my life is uh, I cut class my entire senior year track season because I would go down to gamble horses. I, I took a $2 bet one time and turned into a $1,300, $1,600 reward for betting on a trifecta. I don't explain what that is, but some of you that know about betting horses, you know what that's all about. Anyway, here I am, 17 years old, betting on horses, cutting class of track practice. And uh, I'm reminded of the story of a son who's talking to his father, who was a horse trainer. And he's asking his dad, hey dad, the two horses we got today, who are they? Dad says, two horses today running in the race are faith, and the other one is fear. And the son asks, hey dad, which horse is gonna win today then? So well, son, the horse that's gonna win today is a horse this morning that I decide to feed. So whatever you starve will not win. Whatever you decide to feed will win because you decide to feed it and train it and get after it and get in the race with it. So which horse do you wanna feed in your life? The horse of faith or the horse of fear? But if you are afraid, fear, it freezes you. And people are afraid to fail. Failure is a part of the process. You cannot get where you're going without failing. Partner, you don't learn nothing winning. Somebody share with me that in baseball, same thing in softball, it's a failure sport. I said, what do you mean by that? The, the more you press through your failures, the more you're going to win. So most people, when they get up to bat, majority of the time when they go up to bat, they're gonna lose. But out of 10 times, if you're able to get on base two or three times, and if you hit that, you hit that ball two out of three times, you're the, one of the best of the best. So it's a failure sport. And the way you get yourself out of a financial slump, you gotta understand that some of the opportunities that you take, you're gonna learn from a lot. You may swing the wrong way. It's not about the investment. It's not about the club. It's not about the bat. It's, about the, it's not about the instrument. It's about the swing. And the fact that you keep swinging it, and you're perfecting it, and you keep at it. Michael Jordan took 900 some games. There it is. Shot. There it is. He only done made 140 some of them. Yeah. They don't write about the 700 some misses. <laughs> but you see, he on Wheaty yeah. boxes. People, people, don't, even think about the, he people made. don't even think about the misses. They just think about the that, makes. Nobody gives a damn that he has failed three quarters of the time. Early on in my career, somebody told me this. He said, Imagine what you'd be able to do if you knew you wouldn't fail. Think about this, every phone call you pick up, every person you talk to, every opportunity to go to the door, what would you do knowing that you couldn't fail today? You'd be a Superman.
you got to lose the fear of failing, man. It's just a part of it. It's, it's the deal. The last, the last one, having faith. Well, that's so the faith. ultimate. It's awesome. That's the ultimate for See, sure. See, Mark, I, I was raised cool, man, because my father didn't go to church ever. My father was a hoodlum. He was a hardworking man, but my father was a hoodlum. He wasn't a gangster. My father was a hoodlum. He did. He had some illegal activities with Don King in Cleveland. So I wonder how this is going to play, because some of you were raised with a bad example. The question for you is, what are you going to do with that program? To reprogram yourself or just continue on? And the hard part about being raised up in a bad example, you don't even know it. Vice versa, the same thing too as well. If you're raised in a good example, you don't know it. You don't know it either until you get perspective. Because in the wintertime, he worked construction, so he wasn't working. So he was a number runner in Cleveland. So my first job when I was 10 years old was a paper route. And my job was not to just deliver the papers, but I had to go to everybody's house off my bike and remember where they put their numbers. Some people put their numbers up under the fender of their car. So Steve, at 10 years old, he's part of the game. And my father was a hoodlum. My mother was saved. She was a Christian. My mother wow, amaz amazing. You're the power of a praying mother. Mom's out there. Don't think that your prayers go to waste. By the way, by the time this video is most likely released, it's either happy early Mother's Day to you or happy post Mother's Day. Where would we be without our moms? Church. That combination of his being, doing whatever he had to do to survive for his family, measured with my mother's teaching us about God and prayer and faith and scriptures has been the total cornerstone of who I am. My faith, see faith is the belief in things that you can't. So in Proverbs, it talks about raise a child in the ways of the word. So therefore when they grow, they never depart. Think about this right quick. He was learning how to run game, but his mother still faithful, still praying and what anchored him. What anchor him? Well, it's funny how the numbers weren't anchoring him. He still knew something inside our soul and our spirit finds its way to anchor onto something greater than ourselves. It's interesting how we're wired as human beings. And I see. Mm -hmm. Without that, how you make it? Because I'm finna ask God for something that I don't see no how, no way I can get it. But I got the faith that one day I'll have it. That's cold, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cold piece to lock into yeah, your absolutely. mind. And absolutely. people that don't have faith, that don't have a spiritual background, I feel sorry for them, man, because it's finna be way harder. And by the way, what he's talking about is not a course that you go through, uh, a boot camp that you go through, four years of college degree to go through. It's a decision. It's a decision to have faith in your life because in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, one thing is gonna take over, either your faith or your fear. Again, which will you feed? The light or the darkness? Because darkness cannot operate in the presence of light. It will shine it out. So I'm, I'm amazed at how Steve Harvey has not talked about his investments yet. And was going through uh, his principles of and pillars of success. It's all about character and mindset. Faith, man. All those five pillars are the cornerstone of yeah. So, I mean. The, the so when, when you're looking at faith, as we wrap this up, you know, we're looking at faith. Faith is saying, you know what? It's one thing to have faith inside, but unless you have action, because faith without works is dead. If you can have all the faith, you can have all the prayer. For example, I was talking to a guy last time, Matthew, I, I want to change my life. I want to change my life. I said, great, let's take action. He says, can we just pray together? Okay, let's pray together. Now, let's take action. Can we just, what's holding you back? And I'm reminded here also some words in Peter that talked about in addition to faith, you gotta have some supplements. And here's how some of those supplements go. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and with knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. So there's supplements to it. Just not the protein. There's other things that you have to add to your faith. And a large part of that is works and these supplements that were discussed here in Peter. So where are you at in your financial journey, your financial knowledge, your desire to want to become better? The most annoying thing about having a new goal and recreating yourself, two things happen. 
The more your spirit starts to enlarge, your spirit starts to get larger, your spirit starts to expect more of yourself, and you're excited about where you're going, and guess what? You hit those goals. And your confidence starts increasing because now you know what it takes to hit a goal, and you set another goal, and you have confidence to hit it again. Some of the most confident people in the world is because they hit a goal because they kept a promise to themselves, and they were willing to get the job done. They were willing to put the work in. But guess what you also create in this whole process? You can create some enemies. You can create some vultures around you that whatever you got left over, that's what they want to prey on. That whatever background you have with them, that's what they, that's a prey upon. They try to get you back to where they feel you're, you're most comfortable with them at. But you have to understand that in this process of growth, some people grow with you and some people won't. So with that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. Put in the comment section below some of the things that Steve Harvey talked about. Amazing. Love this guy. He's not just a king of comedy. Um, what a mogul he is. Before I let you go, please check out these two other reaction videos here that uh, a lot of people dropped a lot of comments on. What reaction video would you like for me to do next? Please put the links in the comment section below. My team here reads the comments and feel that this video has provided value to you. Please make sure you click like. If you've watched a couple of our videos and if you've done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.